Hey guys, today we're gonna check out all the gear that I took with me on my trip to Oregon. I did the Three Sisters Wilderness Loop and I also did the Timberline Trail. So I'm gonna get into this, show you everything that I brought for those, the changes that I made to do the uh, Timberline after I did the Three Sisters, which is pretty much the same stuff, but I did change out a few things. So let's get right into it. So first things first, we're gonna get right into the big four. Now the very first thing we're gonna talk about is my pack that I brought. This is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear. 2400 porter, so that equals out to be a 40 liter backpack. I have the Hyperlite water bottle holders on the side of the pack here, since this pack does not have any. And then I also have the porter stuff pocket on the front of this. So that's actually eight ounces of accessories, two, two, and four, uh, added on to the pack. Not the lightest ultralight pack out there. I don't, even, I don't even know if it's considered ultralight. Very pleased with the pack. I've used it for about two years now. Really, really happy with the accessibility of the water bottle holders while hiking, as well as the extra space the pocket provides. The pack is super comfortable and I'm very, very happy with it. The second thing here is my tent that I brought. Now this is the prototype tent that I'm not at liberty to discuss yet. I know it's killing you guys right now, but don't you worry, in time I will let you know what this is so you guys can go spend all your money on it. This, this tent actually did amazing on the trail. I'm really, really impressed with this. So far and can't wait to share with you what it is one of these days. So for my sleeping bag, I actually brought a hammock gear quilt. This is the Econ version, the cheaper version of their uh, top quilts for hammocks. This is a 20 degree quilt. This actually turned out to be perfect. It was almost overkill. Only a couple of the nights I was out there did it actually drop into the 50s. I didn't sweat in it at all and I was just super cozy and super warm in it. Very happy and very comfortable all week long in this. Slept really, really good every night with this thing. Sleeping pad, I brought the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. This is a pretty uh, standard backpacking pad here. This is uh, 12 ounces. It's the regular length, the full length pad. Super comfortable. Like I said, I slept great all week long, so really, really happy with my decision on bringing this. Although it was kind of a pain blowing up, this thing takes way more air than the climate pads that I'm used to using, but all in all, it's really worth it at the end of the day. And that rolls us into the uh, big luxury item I brought, which was the Helinox Chair Zero. Weighs about one pound but after doing uh, long days and especially as high mileage as I did on that first trail I was really really happy with bringing this so here's my clothing bag this housed uh, a lot of the clothing that I brought with me you can see the clothing here this is all my stuff that I wore with the exception of this here but we're gonna get into this bag after I do a quick overview of everything I'm gonna show you everything that I wore or just brought clothing wise Here's my food bag. I have a separate video uh, of all the food that I brought on this trip and both, both trips I'll link up here. This is actually the Light AF Little Bear Bag, the rock sack, the bear bag line itself. Um, this is actually a little bit smaller version of uh, the bear bags that various companies make. I find a lot of the bear bag kits like the full-size light AF kit and the Z-Pax uh, Dyneema kit um, to be just really, really big. I, I can't imagine filling up uh, those bags with food. This, with five days worth of food, is still able to hold my pot and stove set up and everything in it at the end of the night when I hang it up. It's still a good size even though it's the little bear bag. Like I said, it came with the rock sack to uh, throw over the tree. It came, comes with, uh, I think, 50 feet of Dyneema Zingit line a little carabiner, and the PCT hang stick. Here's my cook kit. It has a Reflectix koozie that I made about a year or so ago. A Toke 650 milliliter pot, which is actually a little bit overkill for me. I never really fill up the water past about this line for anything that I eat, any meal or coffee or anything. So it's it's really a perfect size for, um, you know, having flexibility over what I want to cook out there because it has a decent capacity. My stove setup is just a good old fashioned, super tiny pop can stove that I've literally been using since I started backpacking. I've really found no reason to upgrade. It works great. I also have this little top of an Arizona tea uh, can that I would put over it and that would hold my pot up there without it uh, putting out the stove because for some reason, even if uh, all the holes are primed and flaming, if I put a pot right on this, it would always go out. It might have something to do with it being so tiny and not letting the gases build up inside. This setup 
it worked and it worked actually pretty well the, the first night it was a little weird because it would burn off all the paint and it was kind of flaming I don't recommend doing this even though I did it and it, I, I will say it worked the aluminum is actually like all bubbled because the flames are right up on the aluminum kind of melting it I knew that most of the things that I cook like oatmeal and just boiling like eight to ten ounces of water it wouldn't be super high heat enough to melt this also the uh, the lower holes here I would uh, not put those in next time because the flames tended to come out of, of both holes I thought they might just come out of the top but they came out of the bottom too which made it a little scary if I was on uh, some really dry ground I didn't want to catch on fire um, I have this little piece of uh, Brillo cloth or something. It's kind of like steel wool, but not exactly. That's my pot holder here, uh, so when this is really hot, I don't burn myself. Also, not pictured here is the full fuel I use. I use heat, the yellow bottle, the gas line antifreeze. I had it in just a cheap 16 ounce water bottle. I carried probably about 12 ounces of that or so. I didn't do a whole lot of cooking, just uh, dinners and oatmeal in the morning, which takes next to no uh, water to boil. So that was uh, just enough, and I actually used that through both trips and still had a little bit in the bottom of it left uh, at the end of the second trip, but it worked out great. So moving down here in the middle, this is my, uh, my water filter kit here. I have a one liter Sawyer squeeze bag. These things get a bad rap for popping. I'm kind of an advocate of them as of now though because I've never actually popped one of these and I've been using them since I've been backpacking. I think the thing is with these bags is anybody can pop any of them. It just depends how hard you're squeezing it. The filter is actually only going to filter as uh, fast as it can so like you can squeeze the crap out of this thing and it's not going to push it through like a ton faster. So you just uh, let the filter do the work. You can give it just a decent like light pressure and that is enough to get it to filter just like if you're using a saw to cut wood you don't have to grind on it super super hard let the teeth do the work and just go back and forth and the saw will do the cutting for you you don't have to exert yourself kind of the same premise here I have the Sawyer squeeze the full size here um, I have a couple of the minis uh, the flow rate on this is way faster way more convenient and it really doesn't weigh that much I also have a small bottle here that I keep this in and that also uh, becomes my scoop if the water is not flowing or it's a little bit hard to get to. I scoop the water out and pour it into my bag here before I filter and that all is contained with a rubber band and it stays on the outside pocket of my pack for quick easy access. This is my uh, poop kit right here for lack of a better term. I have in this Ziploc baggie, a little um, toilet paper roll. This is actually all the toilet paper I've left from that uh, trip. Just brought a little bit. I have the Deuce of Spades camp trowel here for digging my cat hole. And I also have a little thing of hand sanitizer. Uh, so anytime I have to go uh, do my business on the trail, I can just grab my bathroom kit out of the outer pocket of my backpack, which is always readily available. And I have all the tools I need to complete the job as well as sanitize afterward. This is a trash bag, a big white trash bag. It stayed in the bottom of my pack the whole time in case I wanted to use it as a pack liner. I actually only used this one time during the Timberline Trail, the one day that it was supposed to and did rain. I actually carried two or three of these gallon Ziploc freezer bags and these were to either cook my dinner in or store my trash in. These are crucial out there for me. I also brought a full-size paper map on this trail. A lot of times I don't do this but being that I was out there by myself completely I wanted to have just security with being out there by myself and with purchasing this map from Adventure Maps it actually has a link inside where I can download a digital copy for my phone that I can GPS track myself on. So I had a paper map to look at in case all my electronics would die or fail. This is something completely new for me that I've never used before. This was uh, bought for me for my birthday actually um, from my mom and my wife who really just wanted to feel more comfortable with me being out there by myself myself because I was all the way across the country. This is the Spot Gen 3. This was actually really handy and I had a lot of fun using it and my wife actually had a lot of fun uh, being able to track me 
because uh, it'll track me to whatever intervals during the day I can set it to, which I had it set to the longest time, which every hour it would ping where I was on the trail. They can check and see where I was, as well as uh, two different messages that I programmed. Um, the second one was kind of a, uh, you know, it's going to take me longer than I had thought, so if I deviate from the plan, I could send them that message and they would know that it's going to take me a couple more days or another day. Uh, the other message over here was basically just, I'm at camp, everything's good, I'm good to go, I, you won't hear from me tom till tomorrow. So, sent that one off every night when I got to camp, and it was it was really nice uh, just knowing that I have this SOS button here, if I ever needed a rescue, or if I, you know, broke an ankle, anything that was like really bad, I could always be found out there. So down here are my trekking poles. These are the Gossamer Gear LT5s. If you watch the video, you know that I actually broke one of them on the trail on the second to last day of the Timberline. So right now what I'm gonna do is go over the contents of my clothing bag and all the clothing worn, and then I'm gonna go over my ditty bag here, show you everything that's in my ditty bag, and then I'm gonna go over all my camera gear that I brought on this trip. Okay, so clothes worn, I wear these short uh, smart wool socks. These are actually highly recommended from me. I've worn a lot of different brands of wool socks, including Darn Tough, and I don't know what it is about smart wool, but I swear my feet just sweat less in them or they absorb better than Darn Tough's. But every pair of socks that I usually wear, my feet swim in, and I swear by smart wools. Um, I also wore these Brooks 5-inch uh, inseam. These are running shorts. I really love these shorts uh, for running, especially on this trail. I didn't really like them because they don't have full-size pockets to go in the side, which my hands would have enjoyed when I was out there getting burnt without sunscreen. But I really enjoy running shorts while hiking out there. Also because I don't wear underwear when I hike and these have a liner in them so that just keeps everything in place and happy. This was my long sleeve shirt that I didn't intend on wearing the entire time I was out there but I pretty much did. This is like a, a dry wicking polyester synthetic uh, t-shirt here. Actually not t-shirt, it's a long sleeve t-shirt. I needed some extra coverage out there so I wore that most of the time. Plus there's not a ton of humidity, at least for someone from Ohio. I thought it wasn't humid out there at all, so wearing long sleeves or longer layers wasn't an issue. It felt great. Here's my shoes that I wore uh, with gaiters still attached. These are the, the uh, Dirty Girl gaiters. I really, really can't stress these enough. Uh, if you're going to go to Oregon or do uh, sections of the northern PCT, like where I was at, super, super sandy trails. Um, these are the Brooks Cascadia 12s. Uh, ironically enough, I was in the Cascades Mountains. Now these shoes I've never thought had a lot of padding up in the front here, which actually proved to be pretty helpful on this trip because a lot of the trail I was on uh, was sand and a lot of it was like really thick, like beach sand. So I, I kind of was wondering if maybe they made these with not a lot of padding because the Cascades are a very soft terrain mountain range. But they did okay. I did blister up pretty bad. I'm not sure if I will ever take these on a 100 plus mile trip again. They really only have about 250 to 300 miles on them and they're still in pretty good shape, have a lot of tread left. Uh, I like the shoes. I think they fit well, but I definitely had blisters on both the balls of my feet and both ankles, uh, which could have been attributed to the shoe. It could have been because uh, the terrain was so sandy that I felt like every time I took a step forward, one foot was taking a step back, and I was rocking around in my shoes a lot. So clothes packed right here. I have my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper. 8 ounce puffy jacket, one of the best ones on the market. Uh, couldn't be happier with this about every single evening. It got a little chilly, not super cold, but when you're wearing one layer up top, this is uh, it's very, very good warmth for the weight that you're carrying. Uh, super happy with my decision to bring that along. Uh, here's my uh, dry wicking t-shirt that I brought that I assumed I would wear the majority of the trip, but actually only wore it a little bit. Uh, this actually proved to be more of a neck covering for me most of the trip. My second pair of socks, second and only other pair of socks that I brought, these are the Smart Wool Ultralight socks. Just a little bit lighter weight than the ones that I uh, normally wear, but they were nice when my uh, socks got really dirty and grimy and kind of crusty and sandy. 
Uh, it was nice to have an extra pair out there, which I did alternate every now and then. Here is a pair of shorty shorts. They're about a three inch inseam. These were just uh, in case it rained out there and I was completely soaked and my Brooks running shorts were just uh, nasty and I wanted to lay in my tent, not naked. Uh, I would have an extra pair of running shorts with liners. Um, probably could have left these at home, but then again, if it would have rained a lot, it would have been nice to have. Here's the Mont Bell wind shirt that I like to bring. This is only two ounces. It's a Tachyon Anorak. It's actually a quarter zip um, wind shirt here. I only wore this one day and that's when I was climbing South Sister because it was starting to get a little bit windy at the top and I was getting a little cold. I will say that I really didn't need it up there and I really didn't need it the whole trip, but it is nice to have. This is something that I've never brought before. I had a buddy of mine give me these after I told him how, how cold my hands got at Dolly Sods the last time. I literally could hardly get in my car. I could hardly turn my key to get in my door. And when I got in the vehicle, it actually took me two hands to be able to turn the key in the ignition to get my car started. And he recommended these to me because he works out in the, the wilderness quite a lot in uh, all weather. So he gave me these. So they're pretty much just a latex glove, except they are a dual layer glove. You can see they have white on the inside here. And yeah, I, I've never used these before, but um, I figured this was a good trip to try them on because, you know, I'm out there by myself, so I don't want my hands freezing up and being incapable of doing anything. Here's the rain jacket that I brought. This is a super lightweight, super cheap, super crappy rain jacket actually. It soaks through very quickly. Um, I was actually not expecting any rain on this first trip, which is why I brought this. It's a Columbia, it was only $30. This is actually a child size extra large. So it is a little bit small on me, but 30 bucks, it weighs six ounces. So just for another extra layer in the rain, this would have been nice. It's, it's good for like a, a light mist or a sprinkle, but if I was really expecting a ton of rain out there, I would not have brought this. That is everything that went into my clothing bag and everything I wore. Uh, at the end of the night, I usually just slept in whatever pants or shirt I hiked in, because that's how I do it. Everything else, like my extra layers here, uh, this, uh, my rain jacket I would put into the red dry bag here and I would use that as a pillow. I would also uh, lay this over top of everything. All right, so the ditty bag here. So what I have is my first aid kit. Um, this has just a couple band-aids, antiseptic wipes, alcohol towelette. I also keep a little thing of toothpaste and my toothbrush in here. Um, everything in this bag I did not use. I didn't use any type of pill like Advil or Tylenol or anything out there. I really didn't need it. So uh, it's good to have, but I didn't use anything out of that. Uh, here's also my lighter. It's a, just a little mini Bic. A spork, super cheap, super light, super uh, not important if I lose it or anything. That's why I like using these. It's from KFC, I think I got it from a KFC Famous Bowl. I have a bunch of these and I've been using them for years and I really have no intention of upgrading just because uh, there's nothing lighter and I can lose it and not care about it. Here's my headlamp, it's a Petzl Tequina. I also have three extra batteries for the headlamp, uh, AAAs in this little baggie here. I brought a little squirter bottle here of DEET uh, in case the bugs are bad. I did use this a couple nights because the mosquitoes, I would have been okay without it, but it was nice having a little bit of that. Here's my chapstick in a little tiny chapstick container that I made. It was really nice to have out there. I'd use this pretty much every day. Uh, here's the stakes for my tent. Uh, these are titanium shepherd hooks. I actually brought one or two extra in case I lost any out there, which I've been known to do. I brought a real knife out there. I brought a Mora Eldris, which did come in handy for a few things. One was popping blisters, which I like to do. And when my microphone broke in the Three Sisters Wilderness, I actually used the tip of this as a screwdriver and it worked a little bit to uh, drive the screw back into my mount to get my microphone back sitting on top of my camera. But then I also actually bushcraft a flathead screwdriver out of a stick and that worked even better than this because it fit up in the hole to put the screw back in. So this was actually a really good, good item to bring out there. Also, this is something that I've never brought on a trail before. This is new to me. 
This is the RAV Power 10,000 milliamp battery bank. This is uh, one of the ones that Nemore actually recommends. I watched uh, his video on battery banks. Uh, before I left and made sure I ordered a decent one, so I had my charge cord and that. This worked out great. I actually didn't buy the quick charge adapter for the wall to charge this fast, so it does take a little while to charge. But while I was out there, this thing actually charged my Galaxy S5 about three, uh, three and a half, maybe four times while I was out there. So this was really cool to have, especially since I was using my phone with my GPS map on there. It was nice to have extra battery power. I also brought my phone, obviously, on both of these trips. I didn't mention that. But here are basically all the differences that I took um, from the sisters to the Timberline Trail. I swapped out the Helinox Chair Zero for the much lighter Thermar SZ seat. Uh, I brought Body Glide on this trip. I did use it once because I was actually chafing a little bit on the uh, Sisters Wilderness Trail. I bought a pair of $4 leggings from Walmart um, because on my way to the Timberline Trail, I realized that my legs were so burnt and they were just like hard and crispy. Uh, sunscreen wasn't going to cover it, so I, I pretty much just had to get a layer of clothing to cover my legs. Didn't want to buy hiking pants since I have some here at home. So I got some leggings to put under my shorts and they did great. I wore them for a couple days. Sunscreen that I bought when I got out of the Sisters Wilderness. I used it a little bit just on the top of my hands here and the back of my neck uh, from hiking uh, in, in the higher elevation exposed areas. Uh, it was nice, but I really didn't need it because I had uh, the leggings and long sleeves and my t-shirt that I put over my neck. I also brought, obviously, a different map. Same brand, Adventure Maps, uh, Mount Hood area. So I also had the digital download on my phone. That was nice. This is the Mountain Hardware Vestige. It's pretty old. It's, it's discontinued, and it's not lightweight by any means. Uh, the other light rain jacket is six ounces. This is probably a pound six ounces, maybe a pound ten ounces. Quite a bit heavier, but I was expecting rain one of the days. We were a lot farther north into the uh, Pacific Northwest rain belt, so I wanted a proper rain jacket that wasn't just going to soak through in 15 to 30 minutes. Really happy with this. I wore it pretty much all day. The uh, third day that I was out there because it rained the whole time and it didn't soak through at all, stayed completely dry. Really happy with this. Um, my black rain jacket I actually forgot was in my clothing bag and I actually brought it with me. So I had two rain jackets out there. So that was kind of wasted weight. So I'm pretty sure that those are all the changes that I made from going from the Sisters Wilderness to the Timberline Trail. Okay, so camera gear. Uh, this might seem like a lot, but it actually doesn't weigh too much. This is the camera that I brought. This is the Canon SL3, the 200D. Um, with the Rode Video Mic Go on top, I actually didn't bring this windscreen. I actually brought the Dead Cat that comes with it uh, on top of that. This is uh, just a kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter with the hood on the front. Um, this camera did really, really well out there for me. I really enjoyed it. It's, it's one of the smallest DSLRs on the market, so lightweight. Uh, for a tripod, I brought the Backpacker Air by Mi Photo. This is a two pound tripod, which is about the lightest good tripod that you can get. I've carried um, cheaper, like $15 tripods from Walmart, uh, made by Targus and various brands. I've carried those for years and they just break. And I've went through several of those tripods. It was finally time to upgrade to one that wasn't gonna break and leave me hanging on the trail. So a little bit extra weight, I got a real tripod here. And other than that, I have one camera bag with all my camera equipment in it. I did bring uh, this old GoPro Hero, which has seen better days. It actually doesn't even have the back door on it because it's broke. And uh, this is the last surviving GoPro that I have actually that works. So I brought it just in case it would rain because I'm not going to really get this one soaked out in the rain. This one I don't worry about too much. Um, I actually did not use this camera at all the entire time. So it's kind of wasted weight, but it's nice to have if you need it. Other camera equipment is my Canon 24mm lens. I also carried the Nifty 50, the 50mm lens. This is f1.8, great for nighttime photography, anything uh, super uh, dark, low light. Um, this is one of those lenses that I really love. I love using, but I don't use often. 
I actually did not use it at all on this trip, which is why I chose not to bring it on the uh, second backpacking trip uh, that I went on. So battery power for this camera, I have five batteries. One is in the camera, here's four. I also have them all labeled so I can go in chronological order to uh, keep track of what batteries are dead, which one am I on, and it was just enough battery power that I needed. If I was out there filming like a ton, I would definitely need more, but this was uh, plenty. I didn't run out of battery life on either trip, and I was able to recharge all the batteries before I set out on the second one. SD cards, I brought uh, two mini SDs. SD cards for the big camera, I have a 64 gig, and I actually have two 32 gig. One is in the camera that's filming right now. Um, I actually filled up about 64 gigs of footage from both trips. Now that is everything for the camera gear. It looks like a lot. I know this looks like a lot of heavy stuff, but believe it or not, everything in my camera bag, the tripod, the camera, weighs four pounds and four ounces which is about as light as you can get for a fully functioning tripod and a DSLR camera with uh, additional lenses. So I'm really happy with that. Really like the way everything performed except for the microphone here. It actually broke on day two of the first trip. The bolt that threads into the plastic that holds this hot shoe mount on actually stripped out and I could not get it to hold very tight on to the camera anymore. So in between trips I actually went to the hardware store bought a drill bit, bought a couple different tools, a longer bolt and a nut, and I was able to drill through the plastic, put a longer bolt in, put a nut up in there to hold that on, and now this is actually way more bulletproof than it was before. This is the first trip that I've ever used this microphone on. All right, well that's pretty much everything that I brought uh, to Oregon with me. I'm gonna weigh this bad boy up right now. This has no consumables or anything in it. Um, it actually does have my phone and battery pack, everything I brought with me there, so we'll see. Okay, so we are weighing in at 12 pounds, nine ounces. So that's pretty much my base weight for this trip. Um, factor in food, water, and uh, four pounds of camera gear. So we're looking at uh, day one of the Sisters Wilderness, starting out at about 24 pounds, and day one starting off at the Timberline Trail, probably more around the 19 pound range. So that's pretty good. 12 pounds is not a super like ultra light base weight, but it's comfortable. It's comfortable for me. I'm totally happy with where I have my pack weight and everything nowadays. So I hope this video is helpful to you guys in some way. If you guys like the video, hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already for future backpacking trips and gear videos like this one and I think that about does it here so thanks for watching guys I'll see you on the next one